What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be going over all of the weird, unique uh, things that don't match what the game says they do as far as attachments are concerned for the FFAR. Um, and I've tested literally every stat for this gun at this point and a bunch of stats that might be hidden as well. Um, so as soon as I put this video up, I'm also going to put all of the stats on the website. So uh, feel free to check uh, check that out if you want to see all the stats, but I'm not going to cover every single attachment, every single stat, because that would make this video 40 minutes long and extremely boring. So I'm just going to go over the things that are unique that I found and uh, are very strange. So if ever there was a time where I felt uh, okay asking for uh, you guys to subscribe and share this with your friends and things, this would be this would be the time because testing these Cold War weapons in Warzone is a pain in the butt. It takes forever. Um, so yeah, if you could, if you want to help support this and help me keep doing this, uh, just like the video, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. I think something like 72% of the people on average are not subscribed that are watching my videos, which is crazy to me. Um, so yeah, if you want to see more of my stuff, if you like what I'm doing with the website, with the YouTube, um, I would really appreciate that. So thank you guys for the support. Um, let's jump in and start talking about some of the weird things that I've found. Uh, so starting with the laser attachments. So the steady aim laser is supposed to help with hip fire accuracy. Uh, surprisingly, it does absolutely nothing, or unsurprisingly, depending. Um, yeah, it doesn't help with hip fire at all. It says that it does, and it doesn't. It doesn't to the pixel. It's exactly the same as when you don't have it on the on the weapon. So that's strange. I'm sure they'll fix that later, but for now, it does nothing. Uh, the flashlight and target designator both help with reveal distance, which. Um, I'll look into that later. I didn't do that for this video because that's a new thing that wasn't on the guns before. So I'm kind of just doing uh, common Modern Warfare stats for this video. Um, the SWAT 5 milliwatt says that it helps with hip fire accuracy and hurts your aim down sight time. So again, just like the steady aim laser, the SWAT 5 milliwatt laser is currently broken. Also, it should be a capital W, but that's uh, being pretty pedantic. <laughs> um, but yeah, it doesn't help with hip fire at all. Um, it it does hurt aim down sight time though, so I found that it hurts aim down sight time by 16 milliseconds, which is uh, one frame at 60 FPS or four frames at 240 FPS. So yeah, pretty minor ADS time effect, but I mean it doesn't help with hip fire, so why would you ever use it right now? It's just a broken attachment. Uh, Tiger Team does reveal distance again, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, Ember Sight Point. So this actually does work. This says it helps with hip fire and it significantly does. This reduces your hip fire spread by 50%. Uh, it not not your hip fire spread, your hip fire area by 50%. So that's pretty significant. Um, reveal distance again, I'm gonna look into that later. As far as sprint to fire and ADS time effects, the ember uh, hurts your ADS by 29 milliseconds, hurts your sprint to fire by 33 milliseconds, and hurts your tactical sprint to fire by 25 milliseconds. So uh, some downsides and it's interesting how they're balancing these these guns totally differently in, than in modern warfare so in modern warfare your five milliwatt laser helped with sprint to fire time and hip fire accuracy so uh, the cold war guns are kind of doing that differently where you know for a close range gun you want sprint, good sprint to fire time you want good ads time and you want good hip fire uh, and you could actually do that in modern warfare with the guns you could you could use a five milliwatt laser which gave you all of those things except ads time and now they're kind of all conflicting so you can't it's really hard to build an ar for close range in uh with the cold war guns just because of the way the uh the statistics like uh combat each other so if you have good hip fire you're gonna have bad sprint fire if you have good hip fire you're gonna have bad ads time it's just kind of it's kind of weird how they're just they're just different and that's what makes them so confusing to try to build right now, I think. And we'll see if they kind of adjust this as time goes on. I think they will to some extent, just like they changed the agency suppressor to be more like the monolithic suppressor. I think they'll kind of do that for the other attachments a little bit too. Uh, but for now, they're just kind of, the guns are weird to build just because of that. So as far as optics are concerned, um, I haven't tested them for recoil benefits yet. That'll be something I look at later on uh, in its own thing. But they do, even though they don't say they hurt, uh, ADS times basically they just copied and pasted all of the descriptions of the attachments from Cold War even though some of the things don't exist in Modern Warfare and the engine works differently and there's all kinds of weirdness in, in doing that but uh, these attachments do actually affect ADS time so just go look at the website and and check this out yourself I'm not going to go through one by one all the ADS effects but they'll they'll all be on truegamedata.com uh, so you can check those out and see how they affect the builds so talking about ammunition real quick, um, the ADS times are totally mislabeled on a lot of these. So I'll just go through them real quick. 
I tested literally every attachment for ADS times because I did not uh, want to trust what was on here just because I knew that they just copied and pasted uh, what the Cold War guns said. So I actually wanted to go through and test I, uh, not even just ammunition. I tested every single attachment for ADS effects. Um, so the 38 round mag had no effect on ADS, just like it says. Jungle style mag says that it doesn't have an effect, but it actually had a dramatic effect. F 41 milliseconds uh, slower ADS time with jungle style. Uh, 38 round speed mag had a 41 millisecond penalty, just like it, it says it actually would do that. 50 round mag uh, says that it has aim down sight time, and it does. 33 milliseconds slower. The mag clamp is incorrect. It says it has aim down sight time penalty, but there's no noticeable difference in my tests at 240 FPS. Um, the test, so one thing to clarify real quick, since I'm testing in Warzone, um, I can't actually hit 240 FPS anymore, even though, um, I have a 3080 and a 9900K at five gigahertz. I can only push like 180, 200 FPS at most in certain areas of the map. So, uh, the margin for error on these measurements is probably between like four to eight milliseconds compared to the modern warfare measurements with which I would say the margin for error was about four milliseconds. So it's a little bit less accurate, but it's still it's still going to be the most accurate that pretty much anyone can get because it's hard to build a PC that's faster than this right now. It's hard to get any more frames than I'm getting. That's with everything all the way down. That's just like the most frames you can push right now in, in Warzone. Uh, so keep that in mind. I mean, the stuff's still accurate. It's still going to be you know more accurate than 60 hertz measurements, but it's not going to be perfect. Um, but the data is never going to be perfect, so I'm just doing the best that I possibly can. But anyway, back to the magazines. The 50 round mag, uh, 50 round fast mag, you would expect it to have like the worst ADS times because it's the most helpful. You have the biggest mag, helps with reload speed. Um, so you'd think it would have the most penalty, but there's literally no difference in ADS time with the 50 round fast mag. So again, this is something they'll fix later on, I'm sure. Uh, but right now, 100% the Salvo 50 round fast mag is the mag to use on every single FFAR build. So just keep that in mind. Okay, on to the weirdest of all of the uh, all of the things I measured. So, barrels. I didn't test barrels at all. Again, in term, I didn't trust barrels is what I meant to say, because I knew that Cold War integration was going to be a mess. So I tested every barrel for bullet velocity and um, range changes. So starting from the top, we're going to get a nice. Uh, uh, nice result. So the the 17.9 ultralight barrel for the FFAR says it increases strafe speed. Um, strafe speed is not a stat that is in Modern Warfare as far as I'm aware, so it's not in Warzone. Um, but this is something I'll look into later. Uh, right now, like I said, I'm just looking at the common stats that we had before for all the other weapons, and then I'll come back and look at these uh, new stats later on. But anyway, that's what it says it does. But I found, <clears throat> I found that the 17.9 ultralight increases your damage range by 35 percent so you get a significant increase to the damage drop off it takes the damage drop off there's only one from like 36 meters up to like 47 or something like significantly improves your uh, damage range so totally mislabeled um, on to the next one cavalry lancer haven't tested vehicle damage but definitely this will be something i'm looking into uh, later on but again doesn't say it does anything to range or bullet velocity um, and the Cavalry Lancer actually increases your damage range as well by 20% this time. So less than the Ultralight, but still 20% is significant. Uh, neither one of these have an effect on bullet velocity, by the way. And then the Reinforced Heavy is the first one that actually says that it increases damage range and bullet velocity. And that is actually labeled correctly. So it increases your, your damage range by 30% and bullet velocity by 27%. And then the Ranger Barrel says it increases bullet velocity... Uh, and that is also true. So this one increases your bullet velocity by 57%, but has no effect on damage range. So you get a 57% increase in bullet velocity, uh, but no increase in range with the Ranger Barrel, versus the Ultralight, which is just labeled as strafe speed, increasing your damage range by 35%. It's just the barrels are all messed up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna for sure test the barrels first for all the weapons and uh, try to get that all figured out. Uh, but anyway, the takedown barrel says it increases effective damage range. This is another one that's totally broken. Uh, had no effect whatsoever on the effective damage range of the gun. So the damage drop-off was right at 36 meters, just like it was without a barrel. And then the task force is interesting. So I'm going to break to the game here in a second to show you some stuff about the task force. But um, it says it increases damage. 
Um, it does not increase damage whatsoever. I still don't think any any barrel in the game that says it increases damage, I do not think at this point does. I think it's a lot of placebo effect when you hear people saying that or accidentally shooting someone that already had some plate damage or something. Uh, or maybe maybe they got shot by something. Like I, I, somebody told me that the, uh, the DMR and the Type 63 could one-shot to the head when you put the damage barrel on, and turns out that was just because the person that shot them had stopping power. So um, I think it's just rumors and things. I, I, I think the damage-increasing barrels for all weapons don't do anything, but I haven't tested all of them. I've only tested two of them, but I just get the feeling that that's just a mechanic that wasn't really in the game before. So they didn't want to bring it in for the Cold War weapons, even though they say they do it. Uh, so keep that in mind for now. I will test all of that eventually, and I will for sure let you know if I'm wrong about that. But for now, that's my theory. Um, it also says it increases effective damage range and bullet velocity, which is true. Increases your range by 10%, uh, and increases your bullet velocity by 38%. So it's a pretty good all-around barrel, but it does have a pretty dramatic effect on recoil. So... The vertical recoil is uh, increased by 23% with the Task Force Barrel, so that's pretty significant. But you'll see in a second when I jump to gameplay, um, the Task Force does something interesting. This is one of the three interesting things I discovered when I that I was tweeting about. Um, so I will jump over and show you guys that real quick. Alright, let's take a quick look at the weird recoil properties of the Task Force Barrel that I was just talking about. So. Um, I've noticed that in general the task force barrel has much narrower recoil and um, I'll show you that here so this is this is the FFAR with only a silencer on it I did that so people don't see me when I shoot otherwise they sprint at you and kill you and plunder which is uh, very annoying so especially when you're trying to record a video so I'm gonna shoot a couple recoil patterns here of uh, just a base FFAR so you can see what they look like put one there and then I'll put one over here not moving the mouse at all from these and the FFAR actually has very very inconsistent recoil and in how tall it is how much vertical recoil there is um, so that's why if you're ever testing recoil you need to do like multiple trials to make sure you get the right values um, but let's throw on the task force barrel here and let me put my attack insert down kill myself and then hopefully hopefully this will show you what I've experienced um, it seems like it kind of narrows the pattern and makes it just more straight vertical and you do get, do get more vertical recoil but in my opinion more vertical recoil is totally worth it for uh, that less of that S shape All right, so let's see if this is gonna work out so this is with just the silencer and the task force barrel um, do the same recoil pattern it still has a little bit of an S shape but it definitely kind of uh, tones it down a little bit and I actually measured the difference and it was something like 15 to 20 percent on average less of an uh, less width left to right in the recoil patterns because I was concerned that it was just because the recoil pattern was taller that it looked skinnier but I'm actually pretty sure it it uh, I am sure that it narrows it up a little bit on average it, like I said 15 to 20 percent you can see that uh, with the task force it's much more narrow so I don't know what that stat would be I don't know what to call that, so I put it in there as horizontal bounce just because I want to indicate that it's doing something good uh, to the recoil. So on the website, you'll see that this increases this barrel increases recoil by like 23% vertically, but uh, decreases the bounce by 15%, and that's just because I didn't know what to put this as for a stat. I just wanted to make sure people knew it does something. And you can see this is this is exactly what I was talking about. This is without a barrel. This is with the task force, and the S shape is much reduced. And then same with this one, uh, the total left to right is going to be a lot less on that one. And again here, this is a really sharp uh, right to left turn with no barrel, and then when you put the task force on there, it's much more straight vertical. So if you're good at controlling vertical recoil, I think the task force barrel is the way to go for the FAR. Um, if not, I mean, it still might be the way to go because it really doesn't make that much difference for vertical recoil. It's 20% is a decent amount, but you're not going to be using this gun at long range anyway, so it might be worth it just to put the task force barrel on there and give you more vertical, uh, more straight up and down recoil. It just, uh, it just makes it easier to control without the sharp S turn in the middle of it. All right, so as far as uh, recommended builds go, this is going to be the first one I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's a little odd, and it's not great because of how the attachments work, but this is trying to make the FFAR as, mo as much of an SMG as you can make it. So I've got the suppressor on there. I don't want to use agency because I don't want to hurt ADS times. Um, this does hurt range and bullet velocity, but if you're using it like an SMG, 
your range is still like 32 meters with this build, which is really good. Um, so you also put the Salvo 50 round fast mag again, cause this is like only positives helps to reload time, but bigger mag, uh, serpent wrap is currently the best, um, ADS attachment, which is pretty pathetic cause it only helps 13 milliseconds, but it's still something. So you still want that, uh, for your SMG build. And then the Ember sighting point helps with the hip fire significantly 50% hip fire, uh, help, but it does hurt sprint to fire, which is something that's very, very important. Uh, and it does hurt ADS, which is also important. So to counter those sprint to fire penalties, I put the CQB pad on there. So we more than overcome the sprint to fire penalties and the net effect of hip fire, even though the CQB pad increases hip fire is still, uh, you still have better hip fire with this build. So basically what I was trying to do here is, um, make it as much like an SMG as I could and have these opposing attachments kind of, uh, work together as, as well as they could. So with this build, the sum summation of stats here, your ADS is a little bit worse. Um, looks like 14 milliseconds worse. Not very bad. Your tactical sprint to fire is actually quite a bit faster. Um, your reload time is a lot faster. Your range is reduced a little bit, but like I said, 32, 30, 31 meters for the first drop off is huge. That's still very, very long for something that you're going to be using as an SMG. Uh, your sprint to fire time is uh, redu actually reduced because like I said, the sprint to fire of the CQB pad overtakes the penalty of the Ember sighting point. So you get better sprint to fire and then the hip fire area is reduced pretty significantly, it takes it down. The area is re reduced by about a third. So that's pretty significant. Again, the CQB pad opposes the Ember sighting point, but that's just the way they built these attachments. Um, so, uh, using these two attachments together, the Ember sight point and the CQB pad, uh, nets you better sprint to fire time and better hip fire area, but you get uh, worse ADS time. So it's something to keep in mind. And then obviously your bullet velocity is down a little bit, but not, not so much that it's unusable, especially in SMG ranges. Something you could change a little bit on this build to make it less like an SMG, but um, still uh, a closer range option would be removing the Ember sighting point and adding that uh, field agent grip because field agent just helps with recoil, doesn't hurt your ADS times at all. So basically you, you stop hurting your S ADS times like you were before with the Ember sighting point, but you end up with much worse hip fire. So you can't really hip fire this gun very effectively, but the overall benefits are very high for this build here. So basically everything's a positive now. You have better ADS times, better sprint fire times, um, slightly worse range, slightly worse bullet velocity, but this is more of an ADSing build. So we're not too concerned with this hip fire. Um, and we're still trying to run this up close. So the bullet velocity is not a huge deal either. So this is just another option for a more up close, uh, FFAR. Okay. So if you're going to build your far to go with like a sniper, which is where I think it really shines because it has such a long damage range, uh, and it, it kills so fast all the way out to that damage range. And even beyond that, it kills fast. Um, this is kind of the build that I would be looking at. So I only have four attachments on right now, but I have the, uh, salvo 50, 50 rounds, fast mag, the field agent grip, the agency suppressor and the task force. So basically the reason I choose the task force is because of what I showed earlier, where it kind of makes the recoil pattern more vertical for me, that's easier to control. Um, I would say if you're not going to use the task force, maybe use the ranger just for maximum bullet velocity. Uh, but I like, I like the task force. I think the task force is what I'll be sticking with. Um, of course, salvo 50 round fast mag. There's literally no reason to use anything but that at this point. Uh, agency suppressor is almost a no brainer. You can't really use the other suppressor. Something you could do if you have trouble controlling this gun, uh, is use the infantry con or the SOCOM eliminator, which has a very good effect on a uh, vertical recoil. So 22% reduction in vertical recoil. Um, so that's pretty dramatic. So you could, you could do that if you want. Um, but really those are the only two attachments I would recommend in the muzzle slot. And I'm going to be using the uh, agency for the most part. Uh, and then field agent grip because it's basically a commando four grip and you want this thing to be accurate at range. Um, doesn't hurt your ADS time at all. It's just a, it's just a positive attachment basically. So there's, there's no reason not to use that. I think that's almost a must uh, for a build like this. And then as far as the fourth, the fifth attachment goes, um, I would say the top options would probably be like an optic that you really like. It has the, the far has great iron sights already, but, um, if you like optics, you could pick an optic here. Um, another good option would maybe be like the Raider stock. So you're not going to be hip firing this gun very often, but this would give you sprint to fire and ADS movement speed and like dramatically more ADS movement speed. Um, so this can just be a good, 
um, if you're sprinting into a building or something and uh, you need sprint to fire time in those situations. So this this would really help. And ADS movement speed is always nice. It makes you harder to hit as you're shooting. And 39% is a significant increase. So um, for me, I'm not sure which I would use. I, w I would toggle between the two and see which one I like more. I think they're both good options. Um, you could also use the Serpent Wrap if you want a little bit better ADS time. doesn't hurt your sprint to fire very much at all. Um, so, I mean, that's, those are my recommended builds. I think I don't think you can really build a long range far. I've tried multiple times and it just has too much recoil and it's too hard to deal with that S shape. Um, sometimes if you're up close, you can actually kill someone before you get to where it starts to curve the recoil pattern. Um, but at long range, you never can do that pretty much. So it's just a really hard gun to use at long range. So I would stick with it as like a sniper secondary or even use it like an SMG because it kills so ridiculously fast. I mean, I think it kills faster than everything except maybe the AS Val. I think the Val probably kills faster. But with the FAR, you get a bigger magazine, you get faster reload time, uh, and you get more range too. So uh, I think the AS Val is a hard sell with the FAR in the game right now. Uh, the Val is still great. It still kills super fast. So if you're playing solos or duos, then maybe the Val is still a really good option. But uh, with the far in the game, if you're playing trios or quads, I feel like it's a better choice just because of the bigger magazine. All right, everybody. Well, I think that pretty much sums up everything I wanted to cover in the video. Like I said, all of the stats are going to be on the website. So if you wanted to see something I didn't mention here, um, I mostly just mentioned the things that were strange and unexpected. Um, so if you want to see the rest, just go to truegamedata.com, play with your builds. Uh, yeah, you can see everything there. Um, appreciate everybody watching. Um, if you want to support me, like I said, uh, like, comment, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed, if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, it really helps out. And I hope you guys all find this useful. It takes tons and tons of hours to to make these videos and to get all the data and to program the website. It just takes a ton of work. So I really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me um, on Twitter, YouTube, live stream, everything. Um, you guys rock. So thank you so much. And I will see you all in the next video.